Yo, it's been a hot minute since I've made one of these. Not to worry though, during the time that I've been gone, you can be sure that I've been hard at work playing Minecraft and watching How YouTube. How do you erase time? But stuff still happens in it. I've also occasionally worked on my game, which is why we're here today. And somehow we have quite a bit to talk about with tons of new features and improvements. But first, since it's been so long, let's have a quick refresher and go over what this game even is. Basically, take Doom Eternal Simplified Attack and put it into the Unity game engine. Then slap on some simple Tron-esque graphics because my art skills are bad and that's the best I can do, and sprinkle in some bits and pieces of Titanfall 2's movement system. Oh, and also make sure that enemies are drunk and have detachable limbs. Stir well and bake at 450 degrees for 20 minutes and that just about gets us to where we left off. Now then, let's talk about what I've added since, shall we? First off, we have a bit of a graphics overhaul. I've made a few tweaks to the post-processing and fixed a small issue that prevented me from adding a few effects like motion blur and ambient occlusion, which was caused by how my game uses two cameras to render things, one for the player model and one for everything else, which is pretty standard in first-person shooters. And with that fixed, I was able to, well, add motion blur and ambient occlusion, which made the game look just a bit nicer. Now I know motion blur is a little controversial in the gaming scene and a lot of people prefer not having it at all, but personally I quite like it because when implemented well, it can really make games feel a lot smoother. And luckily for me, the motion blur in my game is implemented pretty well since Unity uses per object motion blur, which calculates how much each object should be blurred based on their velocity, just like in real life, instead of just blurring everything when you move the camera like you see in some games. But I've also gone and added a setting to turn it off for those of you who disagree. Along with that, I decided to make some actual textures, because what's the point of having fancy post-processing if it's just going to be used to polish a turret, as they say? So I threw out the old placeholder tile textures and got to work on making some new ones. Then I remembered that my art skills sucked, which was the reason I was using the placeholder textures in the first place. So instead, I went over to the Unity Asset Store and snagged something that looked good. But while they were slightly better looking, they still didn't really fit the look I was going for, mostly because I just applied them to a square. So I modeled an arena following the visual style of the player and enemy models, and then added a purple glow to all the edges because that's the color you get when you add red and blue together. I'm a goddamn genius, I know. Next up, I decided to start working on the gameplay and adding new abilities and such. A couple people suggested that I add slow motion because it would look cool. I disagree and rather prefer extra fast motion since I quite enjoy the feeling of flailing around in desperation as enemies zip around me at 400 miles an hour. Sadly for me, however, I'm a YouTuber and as such merely a slave to the whims of my audience, so I gave it a shot and tried adding it in. However, somewhere down the line I made a terrible mistake in my code which ended up making the game freeze every time it went into slow motion. So I started looking into what was causing this when suddenly I had a stroke of inspiration. A new idea hit me like a train, no, a road roller. What if I just kept the game like this and said it was a feature? It just works. I know, I know, I'm a genius. But there was another reason I decided to do this, besides my stunning intellect. You see, I had recently finished watching a show some of you might have heard of titled Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, specifically Part 3 Stardust Crusaders. And in this show, the main antagonist and best girl Dio has the ability to stop time for everyone but himself. He's also a vampire and incredibly hot, but that's neither here nor there. Anyways, inspired by this, instead of adding a slow motion ability, I added a time stopping ability, and it's pretty sick. It basically works by first stopping all the scripts and particle systems in the game. This is pretty easy to do, for scripts you just need to not run when time is stopped, and for particle systems you can just tell them to pause. However, for physics it's a different story. You see, while Unity does allow you to slow down and stop physics updates, it does it to every physics object in the game. And since the player is also physics based, they wouldn't be able to move, which wouldn't make for a very useful ability. So instead I devised a different method to individually freeze physics objects that goes a little something like this. Basically when time stops, I loop through all the physics objects currently active. Then I store the velocities of those objects and set them to kinematic, which tells Unity that they shouldn't be affected by the physics system, effectively freezing them. Then when time starts again, I resume their movement by making them not kinematic and setting their velocities to what they were before time was stopped. And it's great, aside from a few minor bugs that were pretty easy to fix, it surprisingly works pretty much perfectly. Next I added a few visual cues so the player knows they're in slow motion, including a ripple before and after the time stop and some fancy color effects. And then just for good measure I added a pretty beefy sound effect inspired by JoJo's time stop dubstep fart sound which I made by slapping an 808 sample and a ticking sound into Audacity and pressing random shit until it sounded cool. And finally I added a little bar that fills up when you kill enemies and only allows you to stop time when it's full, which balances the ability a bit and makes it more of a last resort kind of thing, which is pretty cool I guess. 
but while stopping time is pretty neat, it can also be a little boring at times. And I say this because while time is stopped, you can't really do anything other than set up kills and run away since all your attacks freeze in midair. So I added punching because I wanted to be able to do this. I started off by making a little punch animation in Blender and then importing it into Unity. Then I just had the game play the weapon switching animation and punch animation when the punching key is pressed. Next, to make it actually punch things, I added an animation event to the punch animation that tells the game to do damage and knockback to whatever is in front of the player when a certain part of the animation is played. I also had it temporarily unfreeze whatever object you punch for a fraction of a second if time is stopped, which looks super cool. However, I still thought there was something missing. The punching worked pretty well, but it lacked oomph and was a little on the weak side. So I looked at Doom Eternal's glory kill system for inspiration. Now if you haven't played Doom Eternal before, the glory kill is basically a move where the player character automatically locks onto and is pulled toward the target and then violently dispatches them. And I decided to borrow the automatic lock on part and added a sphere cast to my punch, which is basically just a bit of mass, to find the closest enemy body part to the crosshairs within a certain range and made the player automatically look at it and move towards the center of that body part. And now punching is super sick. Not only does it look cool, it's also really easy to use and has a hilarious amount of range. Great, so we have some pretty sick melee combat now. And that's cool, but now the ranged combat looks pretty lame in comparison, so I thought I'd spice that up too. Now in the last devlog, I said that I'd add more guns, specifically a rocket launcher, so I decided to do that for this devlog. However, I still have some lingering trauma from my last weapon animating experience, and I'd rather never have to do that again, so this time, well, I didn't animate the rocket launcher. In fact, I didn't even 3D model it, I just did this. It took me like 10 minutes to add and it looks amazing, so I consider it a massive win. It works more like how grenades work in other games, and there's a separate ammo counter for it. And whenever you want to shoot a rocket, you just have to right click and Blue Hands Man will fire one off. Oh, and the rocket is basically just a slower, shinier bullet with a particle trail that explodes on contact. And it's pretty great, it doesn't do much damage, but it has a wide area of effect, making it great for taking out crowds of weaker enemies. Also, you can rocket jump, which is a little useless considering the player already has an obscene amount of movement options, but it looks kinda cool. And while we're on the subject of guns, I also tweaked the balancing a bit of the weapons already in the game. Which doesn't really matter since the game still has a long way to go before I should be worrying about it, but I did. Most prominently the shotgun, which I switched from hitscan to projectile base so it matches the other weapons when time is stopped, and also buffed quite a bit, since it was a little weak the last time around. Now it's a lot more powerful and demolishes pretty much everything at close range. In a similar vein, I've also buffed the rifle a bit and increased the rate of fire since it was also a tad weak. But the last weapon, the revolver, is a different story. I actually realized it was a bit too powerful and had severely underestimated it since apparently it did just enough damage to one shot like half the enemies if you hit the right body part. But nerfing weapons is lame, so instead I embraced the broken and buffed the accuracy a bit, making it pretty much a sniper. Oh, and I've also added sound effects for the weapons now. Yeah, it only took 5 months, but my game finally has sound. The process for adding these sound effects was basically finding free CC0 sound online, slapping them into audacity, and button mashing, but it turned out not too bad. I also went and added sound effects for most of the other things in the game, like footsteps and explosions, which really make the game feel much better. There still isn't any music though, but I'll try to figure out how that works in a future devlog. Either that or I'll hit up Kevin MacLeod or something for some copyright free classics. I can't think of any way to segue from that, so next topic, movement. I've slightly improved the movement system since the last devlog, mainly in the double jumping department. After the last devlog where I released a small gameplay demo, a lot of people mentioned how the double jumping was finicky, mostly due to how it was super hard to tell whether or not you had a double jump available, and people would often walk off platform then jump too late, using their double jump instead of their normal jump, but they didn't know that and ended up flopping when they tried to double jump again because they had already used it the first time. I first fixed the jumping too late problem by adding something called coyote time, where the player is still able to jump a few frames after they walk off a platform. A lot of platformer games do this and it makes parkour a lot easier and more enjoyable, at least if you aren't a masochist, which is great. Then I added a unique double jump sound effect and made the player's hands jerk downwards when jumping just like in Titanfall 2 to provide more feedback to the player that they've double jumped. And I think it ended up working pretty well and I'd consider the problem fixed. Another sort of fix I made was with the walking. Now it wasn't broken before, but it might as well have been because it was incredibly slow. And that's no fun, so I bumped it up by around 25%, and it instantly felt a lot better and much more Doom-like. With that fix, I decided to add yet another movement mechanic, dashing, which was, like most of the game, inspired by Doom Eternal. Basically, it adds a burst of speed to whatever direction you're moving in horizontally and makes you temporarily invulnerable, allowing you to dodge bullets and shit, which is cool. 
It also recharges every few seconds and makes the parkour even nuttier, since now you can cross absurd distances without even coming close to the ground, which I find both hilarious and horrifying since designing levels around this will be a massive pain. But oh well, that's for future me to figure out so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Now that's all well and good, but so far we've only seen updates to the visuals and player mechanics. And I didn't want the enemies to feel left out, so the last thing I did was focus on upgrading them. Now I didn't actually make any changes or additions to the general look and feel of the enemies, but I did do quite a bit of work under the hood, aka the AI. Now before, the ranged enemies were pretty dumb. They would just pass fine directly to the player until they were like 2 feet away and start blasting, which didn't really make sense. So instead, I made them pass fine to a spot much further away from the player and try to maintain line of sight, which is much more tactical and very cool. They'll also pass find away from the player if they get too close, which is also much more tactical and also very cool. But I felt that they were still a little too weak, mostly because their shots were incredibly easy to dodge. And this is because the enemy bullets travel quite slowly and the enemies aim directly at the player's current position, meaning that any amount of movement allows you to dodge them quite easily. So I went and fixed this by making them predict the player's future location based on the player's current velocity, then aim at that position instead. And this worked pretty well. Perhaps too well. Now the enemies were a bit too powerful and would be able to hit the player most of the time, even when moving really fast. So I once again took a page out of Doom's playbook and made their accuracy depend on how fast the player is moving, with the accuracy being really high if the player is just standing still, and really low when the player is bouncing around at high speed. And this worked great. Enemies now aim slightly more realistically while also motivating the player to move around a lot cause, you know, you'll get pulverized if you don't. And that just about covers what I've done to the game so far. I've also made a whole ton of tiny improvements and bug fixes, but frankly I doubt anyone cares about how I moved the camera back like 2 inches, so I'll spare you the details. But wait, the video's not over yet, and that's not just because I want to stretch this video out as much as possible for maximum ad revenue. At least not this time. Rather, there's something I need to address. No. No, it's not a Carlson clone. Now if you're one of the two people who don't know what Carlson is, it's basically an indie first person shooter being made in Unity that, like my game, also has shooting and wall running. And it's being developed by Danny, a game developer and YouTuber with a pretty massive audience. And with an audience of that size, there will inevitably be a few people who aren't aware of the fact that the genre of movement shooters exists, and think Carlson was the first game to have these mechanics, and then go on to spam Carlson clone in the comments of every game that looks similar, i.e. this game. Now I have nothing against Danny, he is a great content creator and was one of the reasons I decided to learn Unity in the first place. He's also already addressed this when the game Ghost Runner was getting hate for being similar to Carlson. You know, people see a game with wall running and they're like, oh you're making a Carlson copy, it's like, bruh. <laughs> Last time I checked, I, I didn't invent wall running. But apparently not everyone got the memo. So I'm saying it now, here's my game, here's Carlson. They're not that similar, aside from both being first person shooters with wall running. And regarding that, here are like 6 games that are also first person shooters, with wall running, with the game that a majority of my game's movement system is based off of being this one, not Carlson. Although I've taken a few creative liberties with it so it doesn't really resemble any of these games anymore. So yeah, if you're gonna call my game a copy of another game, at least pick a game that's actually similar, like say Get to the Orange Door, which is another Unity indie parkour shooter that's been in development for a couple years, and is much more similar to my game, with a very similar art style and gameplay mechanics, including shooting, wall running, and neon lights everywhere. It was even inspired by the same games I was, except I haven't played Halo. And that's super weird because I didn't even know this game existed until after my game was well into development, sometime after I uploaded my second devlog when someone told me the two games looked similar. Oh, and it even has a time stopping ability too apparently, which I fittingly only found out about a few days after I revealed my own time stopping ability, which was kind of awkward. But then again, this game has everything, from slow motion to yondu there to a super hot mode aptly named Ultra Cold. And there's really not much I can make to get to the orange door that I don't already have. Like seriously, the game is really cool, the developer is super talented, and if you have any interest in my game at all, you should definitely check it out. But that being said, I just want to clear up that I wasn't influenced by this game at all when developing my game, because, you know, I didn't even know it existed until recently. I was just inspired by the same games the guy who made it was inspired by, so many of the similarities can be chalked up to that and coincidence. Also, it isn't exactly like my game, and there are several key differences anyways. For one, Get to the Orange Door's movement and design is much more similar to Titanfall's than mine, with massive levels, a lot of momentum and speed, and mechanics like sliding, while my game leaves those out in favor of more precise Doom-like combat. And two, my game looks like shit while Get to the Orange Door doesn't. My game is also still super early into development, and I'm constantly adding, removing, and changing things in order to make my game as unique as possible. It's just a little difficult when you're using one of the world's most popular game engines in an already saturated genre and have little art skills. 
but hopefully by the time my game is finished and all it's been said and done, you should be able to look at my game and go, huh, that game only looks vaguely like other games. So yeah, moral of the story. Coincidence has happened, I'm not intentionally trying to copy anything other than Doom Titan following the last three episodes of Stardust Crusaders. My game will be a lot more unique once it's done, and check out Carlson and Get to the Orange Door if you haven't already. They're of course both similar to this game, so if you find this interesting, you'll probably like them too. Carlson devlogs are on Danny's YouTube channel, and you can wishlist Carlson on Steam. I heard he's trying to get it to number one on the top wishlisted charts, but personally I'm rooting for I Am Jesus Christ, a game where he plays Jesus Christ, so he'll have to settle for number two. And you can get Get to the Orange Storm Steam right now, it's in early access and the developer also has a YouTube channel. And while I'm at it, also check out a few of these games that are also pretty similar to this one and deserve more attention. There's Ultra Kill, which is a really cool fast paced retro shooter, Bullets Per Minute, which is a first person shooter that's like Doom but a rhythm game, and Shady Knight, a first person sword fighting game which looks sick. Unrelated, but I also highly recommend playing Skyrim, although the game is pretty old and buggy, so I recommend trying out a few mods for added immersion. And if you've played Super Smash Bros before, check out Super Smash Flash, it's Super Smash but on Flash, and it has Waluigi. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you somehow enjoyed today's episode, make sure to like, subscribe, etc. These really do take a lot of time and effort to make, and I appreciate all the support. And if you didn't enjoy it, then feel free to dislike and yell at me down in the comments section. Just try to keep it PG, there are kids here. And as always, there's a gameplay demo of the current version of the game linked below. It's exactly what it sounds like, a demo of the gameplay, and it's pretty much just a sandbox you can mess around with. But yeah, that's all from me. See y'all when my next video is done, whenever that'll be. I'd like to say it'll be soon, but every time I've said something like that, I've been terribly wrong, so I won't. But I can at least say that it'll be sometime in the future. So till then, goodbye.